This is a supplement to my low stats keep run video. My stats are a little higher here, 6k power, 6500 range. My ensnares are fused in this video, but I'm not sure that they have to be. I've got 8k power, 5k on the rest of my stats here for my warden for wisps, and my overclocks are at 8k. I'm gonna be using a squire to fight the boss this time. He got some buffs, the map got, the map got some buffs, and Wisps got nerfs, so that's the balance changes. I'm gonna use a Fused Monkey King to, to fight the boss. Now, if you don't have a Fused Monkey King, here is a very lazy and simple build. It's basically just a couple of auras and Snare and Electric, and I spam Wisps. 23 of them right in the middle of the map here. If you don't have Fused and Snares, you might be fine without them, but if you'd like to, you could cut a couple Wisps, fit the remaining 21 Wisps on a 4 DU buff beam, and then you've got 9 DU, throw a few gas traps around at the top of the stairs and stuff at the chokes to, to have some fused crowd control in that case. I make sure that some of the wisps on the outside of the stack are level four so they have big range and I've got a striking gemstone on so that the auras are huge and the two wisps nearest to me have enormous range as well. So I've got tons of coverage here. It's a very lazy run. I don't even move. This is after finishing the actual map. I saved all of the mana and I'm spamming it all right now. This is the build uh, the build phase between the bonus wave and the uh, the last wave, wave 25. I'm using the summit bonus wave here, the ancient dragon bonus wave here. I'm assuming that maybe not everyone's got the uh, Lycan King beaten and the uh, the keeps bonus wave yet. So here's the end. Uh, it's I literally don't move. I just stand here and boost for the entire run. So that's the the bonus chest and if you do the bonus wave you get two of these you don't actually have to do a bonus wave but here's a monkey king you you want to look for good attack rate here and then all three hero stats would be ideal the fastest attack rate that i've ever seen that i think is cap is 0.33 um the one that i'm going in with is 0.4 i haven't had good luck with these and i'm going to be using a striking gemstone we're back at the keep now on my monk and i'm going to play him actively so i'm going to throw a few levels into this overclock and then I'm going to make sure that four of these Wisps over here are level five, mainly for the range. That's the big thing. The nerf on the range is a problem. That's why this build is less consistent now, unless you do some specific things. So four of them are level five, and then that one is level four. Not really any rhyme or reason to that. So I'm over here at the other Aura stack, or the other Wisp stack. This, this is the exact same build as the other videos. So if you haven't seen that other video and you want to see the details of the build, check that video out, but I spread this mana, the remaining mana evenly into these wisps, and then I do drop a reflect field here. There's a chance that you could get one of these ogre spawns over here chucking uh, rifted kobolds at you. It could happen, so better safe than sorry. I had two DU left because I didn't drop the healing aura yet. You don't need that until the boss fight anyway. So I dropped the reflect. I've got my striking gemstone hitting four of these wisps here, and I'm gonna stand here, tower boost, and just hang out. I do shoot copters down. Uh, you don't probably have to do that for this. And um, there is one lane in particular to look out for. So you can see the range on the Wisps is huge when you have the uh, Striking Gemstone on four of them. I just let the portal stay open. No big deal. You don't really need to worry about them with the specific strategy. This one lane, I'm gonna show it right here. If you get an Ogre spawn, on this one particular lane on the top right where the red circle is right now. If an ogre comes out of there, what you should do, because it's a short lane, just go over, drop a tower boost on the other stack of wisps and go right back. You'll be fine. The wisps with a tower boost are gonna hit like twice as hard. That's the only ogre that ever gave me problems when I retested this build with these stats. My stats being a little bit higher, but man, they made the map so much harder with the uh, nerf to the wisps, but then also the uh, boss wave. It's just a lot harder too. So I keep all the mana. I went and collected. I kept all the mana. So I've got 9159 mana here. This is the beginning of wave 24. I just wanted to show that it's not the only RNG dependency really is that one ogre spawn. And if you just go over, boost the other wisp stack, you're good to go. But I let the wave run here and I just keep the rest of the mana. I show this because I want you to see what happens. That bottom right ogre spawn, I never had him make it near the crystal, and uh, the copters hitting the map, the portal staying open, the other ogre spawns, I never had an issue when I did a handful of test runs on this map, so 
I'm pretty confident with uh, just changing your upgrade priority being all that's needed to get this this build back up to speed. So here I've got like 18,000 mana and my main priority is making sure all the Wisps are level five because they get a substantial increase in the range per level up. So I hit the buff beam with a couple levels and then each other Wisp over there to level five. I do drop my healing aura, it's fused. You could go without a fused healing aura, but then you'd have to manage your HP a little bit on the squire. You'd have to heal a little bit during the fight. You would probably have trouble killing him in one cycle if that were the case. And then I, I dump the rest of this mana into the wisps, prioritizing getting some of them to level five. And uh, then I'm gonna swap it over to the squire. G up for the final wave. This wave is pretty simple. Uh, my main priority here is going to be just keeping an eye out for ogre spawns, and I want to collect mana as much as I can during the wave. I am going to close portals for this wave because if you leave them open, they stay. And then when you go into the boss fight, now you've got open portals during the boss fight. No reason to do that to yourself. Just close the portals. I think that's the better idea. So there's the ogre spawn that I was thinking about before and saying to look out for. I'm, over, I'm already over here anyway, so I go over and just kill him. Um, so, I didn't mention this earlier, but the weapon on my Squire has Irradiate. That's the most important thing. You need the Monkey King, you want Irradiate on your weapon, and then you want to stack some Vitality, ideally. Your offhand can be really anything, your set can be whatever you get. Here I'm putting a few levels into the electric auras and uh, overclocks just to make the map a little safer, but it's probably not necessary. I don't know. Maybe uh, that mana will be better spent on the wisps. I'm not really sure, but that's what you want to look for for your weapons. You need to radiate. And the reason you need to radiate is because you have to get this guy out of stealth. And you see the pink little orb there? That's irradiate. So that's what's dealing most of my weapon damage. It's not actually my swings. My swings and my melee damage are negligible. The Irradiate is dealing damage. The Monkey King, now that he's out of stealth, is dealing damage. Especially now, just there, I Hero Boost it before his first attack. I think you should do that. Hero Boost before he does that howl and pulls you. That pull attack hits pretty hard. If you Hero Boost, you get armor. So you don't take as much damage while you're Hero Boosted. I'm also inside the Healing Aura, which is why I can take as much damage as I am. I do have, I think it's six MP regen on my accessories. Four or five would be fine too. Anything will help because it'll elongate your hero boost, which is why I have such a long hero boost here. I decided to trigger the trap when he's at about a quarter or a sixth somewhere in there of his health left. I could have waited a little longer. Maybe I wouldn't have had to chase him down, but that's what's going to help here for this. Um, irradiate on your weapon and then any kind of attack speed boost to apply it as often as possible. A monkey king fused and then your wisps are going to deal some damage too. That's how I would suggest doing it now with lower stats. Like if you're not running around with 10 or 11K on your stats and stuff, the weapon could be anything really. The actual weapon's damage is negligible. It's really the irradiate you're after, but that's my strategy. That's what I would suggest. Any questions, feel free to leave a comment. Thanks for watching.